the all of the the bennies that are there if you work hard you like to own your own home and all that good stuff send the kids to school you want the best education so that's considered a lot of time as being conservative you know on the other side people tend to identify the liberal side from the standpoint is I want to give it to me that kind of all of the all of so kind of negative stuff that that tend that people tend to identify as liberal well another way I think I think the way I like to look at it is conservatives uh, want to to uh, uh, make their own living and and uh, get on the, on by, on themselves. Uh, liberals want to direct how other people should live. Okay. Okay. And they you know, they believe that a small group of people are are smarter than the rest of us. Okay. And that they should control how we live. Okay. And they should tell us what to do, and we need to do what they tell us to do. I'm good. Conservatives believe. Everybody is smart enough to get by on their, or not everybody, but most people are smart okay. enough to get on by okay. their own. Okay. Uh, and uh, that they shouldn't uh, be looking for handouts from the government, and they shouldn't be looking for the government to take money from somebody else to, to give to another person. Right, right, right. And, and, and under the, our country, it says this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Well, that, and, that and was. 90, and 90% 90 of the po population identifies themselves uh, as, in all due respect, in all due respect, the ten percent are the individuals that are saying, "I'll tell you what to do." They got the money, and well, the other ninety percent don't have the money. Well, it's probably smaller than ten. It's probably more like three. Three percent. Yeah. So three percent of this country is conservative, and the other ninety-seven percent are liberals. Heavens no. Okay, so I, I agree with you. Then I'm saying then maybe then a person can be conservative and liberal too at the same time, depending upon the situation. Fair? I I think yeah, absolutely. I think there are. Definitely, uh, people can people can have liberal. The same person can have liberal ideas and conservative ideas. Okay. A, a traditional way of looking at it is um, uh, there have been um, uh, social conservatives and uh, economic conservatives. Right. Right. And so the idea with the, the social is they believe in things like the family and and uh, a right to life. Okay. Uh, whereas physical physical conservatives are more concerned about you know whether or not the government is going into debt. Uh, or whether or not uh, the government is taxing people too much. Uh, so you, technically, a person, you could be both liberal uh, or, or conservative physically and, and liberal socially. Okay. okay. Um, there are a lot of pro-life people who believe you should have a balanced budget. Or, excuse me, pro-choice people who believe that you, can have a, uh, you should have a balanced budget. Um, I, what I, when I ran for office several times, uh, what I identified to me is, is the, the the bellwether issues for conservative is the uh, right to defend yourself using the right to keep and bear arms and right to life. I, I've always considered those to be the, the two uh, gold standards. From your viewpoint. From my perspective, that's right, yes. That's right, that's right, that's right. And I guess that's the point we're making. My point is that one could be liberal and one could be conservative, it, depending upon the situation. Mm -hmm. Fair? Right. Okay, so we got that point across. Now, I hope you understand what we're talking about on that end of it. Now, let's get right into the presidential race. Yes. And we've got two, two, two major proponents right. that's running. And one, you've got the Democratic proponent, and that's, uh, for, well, Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton. And Secretary of State, and, or and, Secretary of State Secretary Hillary Clinton, State, yes. Okay. And then we've got uh, Donald Trump. Yes. Okay, a builder-developer type. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. TV star. Was a, t a TV star, but again, too, he's an outsider. Yes. Do you agree with that? He's an outsider. Well, he's an he's insider outsider. He, inside he bought outside. the politicians. But we all that way. He really? used to buy the politicians. Now he's trying to be a politician. Huh? So he used to be very much inside. He would buy politicians to get what he wanted. And now he's trying to get people to vote, elect him, even though he's he's... He's an outsider. He's kind of been at war with the Republican Party, uh, certainly in the last few weeks, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. He's definitely set himself apart from the traditional or, uh, Republican right, Party right, politics. Right. So he's an outsider. I would agree with that. Okay, okay good. Uh, now, no, yeah. so what we're going to do, we're going to first, we're going to talk about the Democratic Party. We're going to talk about Hillary Clinton, and we're going to talk about Trump. Now, naturally, there are many issues on the table that we can, we can reference them and talk about them in regards to that particular piece. But I think we want to stick to one issue that I think Corrupt? It would be very... No, Corrupt? I want to talk to racism. I want to talk to race. Fair enough. That's a major, major piece. And it seems as though, and just as just a little brief piece, we've got a situation where it looks like race only comes in from the standpoint of importance only when there's a race to be run. Before like, that, right. before that, they're just sitting up there under, they're under the bus. They're, they're nothing. They have nothing to talk about, right? There, there's no, uh, because of all due respect, 
the assimilation is, in this country is almost it's ridiculous. There's nothing happened. Nothing has happened since uh, since Lincoln, right? Remember that? Remember that? And he was shot for it, so to speak. Okay, but let's talk about race as it relates to both of these camps. But we're going to talk about the Democrats first. Okay. 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 All right. Democrat, the Democrat Party running for office. We've got Hillary, Hillary Rodham Clinton, and you, you've seen the, some of the news stuff just now. And I started off by saying, like now, here we are now at the end of the campaign. I got about what about, but two weeks, two and a half weeks or so. Right. Two and a half weeks or so to go, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at all of the media today. That's how we start this thing off. And guess what? I don't see any blacks. I don't see, I don't see any Mexicans. They're not on the ballot, not on our ballot. I, no, no, I'm talking about the, 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 the media, because you know, that's the other side of the coin. Right. The media. You're right. And I'm, I'm going back and forth because there's so much stuff to be on, and we only have a few more minutes. Well, at least we do have women in the media. That's a, that's a, that's a step forward. It's not all men talking heads. It's also women talking heads. And there's been some, there, there, you know, the, so it, it, we, got, we got some integration there. Yeah. Women no, are, no, we got white women. Yes, you're right. Let's make sure we got, we got white women. But white women also were at, at one point in time, in fact, they too, and to a certain degree, are kind of like uh, 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 inside and outside because, in all due respect, they, identi they identify themselves. They, no, the, the system has identified white women as minorities also, too, in certain yeah. circumstances. Well, and the other thing is, though, that we have to say that the, the women who are on camera are pretty. What's that? The women on camera are pretty, beautiful. There aren't very many ugly women on camera. Well, I don't know. Trump didn't say that about some of them. Well, he was wrong. And the, the ones that are on camera are beautiful. Huh? And they're chosen because they're beautiful. They're beautiful? Okay, Absolutely. okay. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, but my point is that in terms of actually being participating, uh, participating in the whole issue of, of, uh, of, of talk about this, the issues, the issues today, I didn't see any. Right. Just well, we did, see one, we did see one black woman on TV this, this week, and she embarrassed herself in the party. She represents Donna Brazil. She, she was absolutely embarrassing. Uh, she did a terrible job because she was exposed... You know, she'd given Hillary Clinton and her campaign questions that were going to be asked at a, at a Democrat primary uh, debate before the debate, and she had, didn't have an answer. And, and that's one. That's the thing you talk about. Right. Well, let's, let's talk. No, that's good. No, we, we're talking about black. You're right. You're right. Let's talk about. It. Let's talk about it. because Dinesh D'Souza has a new movie out, uh, Hillary Clinton's America, and it, it, it exposes the history of the Democrat Party and it's it's uh, pro. Slavery tradition. I mean, it was it was the party that was pro-slavery. Republicans were never pro-slavery. It was the Democrats. They've always been anti-black in terms of history. They were pro-Ku Klux Klan. It, the Democrat, the Ku Klux Klan, was Democrat Party in action. It wasn't the Republicans running around in white robes. It was the Democrats wearing white robes and wearing the Ku Klux Klan. It is it is a Democrat Party that has oppressed black. Woodrow Wilson reset the the, the government had become integrated in this country, the federal government, the post office, for instance, and Woodrow Wilson segregated the federal government again. Okay. Okay. He made it so that the, the, there were no uh, uh, African Americans in the Army, Navy, uh, Marine Corps, okay. and, and and he got them out of the, the post office for the most part uh, because he, and, and he advocated um, that, that horrible movie, um, uh, uh, Birth of a Nation, okay. uh, which, which glorified the Ku Klux Klan, and yet, you know, that's that's the history of the Democrat Party. But then Truman came back, remember? Yes. And he, he guess what? Put him in. He integrated the service. Yes, he did. As a Democrat, right? Yes, he did. You got me? So, uh, so I guess my point is that uh, the Republican Party really had it initially uh, when I.E. Lincoln came out, ran for office as a Republican, right? right. And he won, right? Yes. And part of the platform was that, i.e., uh, uh, recognizing uh, actually African African slaves who were here and actually was talk, talking to assimilation. Well, actually, what Abraham Lincoln did when he ran in 1860, his, his platform was to not allow slavery to expand. That was the, that was the issue uh, because... It, but it still it, talks about inclusion. I mean, it wasn't about just, just stop you. You're not going to accept any more. That's kind of a deal. Well, the, the the question was: Should slavery be extended westward, and should oh, yeah, okay, should okay. slavery be extended? I mean, but that northward? was the first step of assimilation. When you when you say, first step in terms of including them in a party, 
including well, them in, in, in well, this country. As, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation was probably the first step in terms of inclusion uh, to, to free uh, sla you know, black slaves. But that came after doing it his, his, his time in office, so to speak. Well, it was right? in the middle of his first right, term, right, yes. Right, 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 right. Well, that's all. Uh, so, but my point, I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that you're right. The Republican Party was, i.e., was carrying the torch. Absolutely. And that's then, why it was formed. That's what. That's why the Republican right, Party was right, formed, right. was to end slavery. But then guess what? They shot him. Yes, they did. You got me? And then, so all of a sudden... Shot by a Democrat, by the way. Yeah, John Wilkes Booth. But still, but, but still, my point is the Republicans are still around. Yes. <laughs> but why did they stop, if you will, why did they, why did they stop lobbying, if you will, uh, 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 assimilation as it relates to black Americans now? Because now... They're black Americans. Well, right? the Civil Rights Act of 1964 would never have passed had it not been for Republican support. Yes. It, the, the, the act of uh, opposition was, was Demo the Democrats in the South. They were the ones that were fighting the 1964 Civil Rights okay. Act. It was the Republicans in the North that were advocating for it. Okay. So we certainly had assimilation through there. And um, uh, we certainly we, we at least have laws on the books about equal housing and, and lots of other things. So, so the, the legal impediments to assimilation have been taken down. Okay. There is a new, a very dark uh, uh, chapter now, I think, where it is, it is the African Americans that want to uh, stick together and not uh, assimilate with, with white people. Oh, where did that come from? Well, Jesus Christ, I mean, that's... I mean, I'm, I'm assimilating with you now. I mean, well, you, yes, you are. <laughs> and in fact, so, you live in a white neighborhood. You? Oh, oh no, 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 no. They, they're just, they're just Americans. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, they all look alike to me anyway. But <laughs> I mean, they got. I'm I've just saying, making a home. living. Well, I know that, I've but been we, we're making a living. We're just trying to hustle. We're just trying to survive, right, Jim? Right. So, I mean, that's the name of the game. Why, why, why don't we just get rid of the whole world? Let's get rid of the minority piece. Get that out of the way. Got me, right? Okay. There's no such thing as African Americans anymore. There's no such thing as Hispanics. I mean, they're all Americans, right? Wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I, I don't see. It's a, it's a cliche, but I don't see color. I mean, I know you, you don't, and, you know, I, and I know I don't. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, we, we're, but if we, we need more of us. Let's put it that way. Okay. Is that fair? You got me? Yes. And and then and I think that's. Where, but let's get back down to Clinton. Now you you mentioned Donna Brazil. I thought that was a very interesting piece because we want to make sure we we bring the third party piece in there. Piece uh, and talking about Gary, but uh, but uh, Donna Brazil. But you got to remember now, she also was working very closely with Clinton. In fact, yeah, she she's took, the chairman of the Democrat Party. Right. She took over from the Jewish yes, now, she remember? Did. Yes. Who, who was there and she'd made a mistake and so they they threw it threw her under the bus. Again another minority. But, another minority. But they did but they did the same thing. The, the, Wasserman Schultz got canned because she was giving information to or you know giving information to Hillary Clinton. That's right. They threw her under the boat. But, yeah. but Donna Brazil did the same that, thing. That's right. But guess what? But guess what? Now now Hillary is running and she broke the laws, you know, with the, yes, the emails and this, that, and the other. But they kept her. Why is that? I, I don't know. She must the have the Democratic something. Party kept her. Why? She must have something on Bill, uh, on, not only Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> mentioned the right guy because Bill Clinton is our there. president. Our pre she must have something on him because his Justice Department, his FBI, mm -hmm. had her had her dead to rights on the emails and the most thing. This last debate that nobody's talking. All the all the debate talk is, oh, Trump says he's not going to you know uh, live with the results of the election if he doesn't win. But what they're not focusing on is that she talked about uh, what, what were, it was a state secret about how long it would take to respond to a, a nuclear threat. She, on the podium, said how it would take four minutes to I respond. I saw that. I saw that. Now, that was, that in and of itself was a violation of the, uh, uh, of secrecy and, and anti-espionage. She should be rung up for that, too. She's a woman, Jim. She's a white woman, Jim. I understand that. Bill Clinton is a white male, Jim. He, yes. Who runs the country? White males, right? I mean, well, a few. The president few, is not the majority. American. Oh my God, gee whiz! Where is he? Is he? Do we have an elected uh, black? You know? We do. Yeah, but guess how they elected him? Think about it. You know this. what's really scary, though? Now, this is, is a Democratic it, Party. We're eight still years ago, Democrat. eight years ago, the people of America voted for an African American, and instead of building on that and and, and accepting that that means that we're not ra a racist right, nation, right, right, right. Ever since. He has been grumbling that it is an unfair nation and that, that we are uh, that we're uh, anti-African American that we're you know anti-Hispanic and that's just not true. Let's break that down about this African American because I'm not an African American. Okay. Now I might go on with the Black American person of color. Oh no, no, Black American, no problem. I'm black American, I have no problem with that. They are white Americans, right? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, they're Asian Americans. Yes. They're Mexican Americans. But I'm not an African American. Now, the African, a lot of times you, people, when they say African American, they think it's just black folks. But we got a lot of white Africans that I have do. come here, right? That's true. But you don't hear about Af well, there white are, Africans. There, no, South, no, no. South Africa didn't have a lot of people. In I don't it. give a damn. They had one, but they're still <laughs> they're part of that classification. Yes, that's I'm true. I'm just saying to you, we got black Americans, we got white Americans, we got Mexican Americans, who who basically re most of them originated from Mexico. That's come here to a certain degree. Yes. You got all this other stuff. We got Hispanic, but but let's break that down because I, that's a very now let's think about President Obama. Now remember when he got elected to office, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. And by the way. When when you say Muslims, you think black. People think black. No, Arab. Is that what I'm saying? But the majority, <laughs> the majority of us are not black Americans. They're very small, but they they are identified as Muslim. Black Americans are identified as Muslim. That's right. Just like Mexicans, they got Mexican Americans. They put all these other deals about undocumented workers and this, that, and the other. No, Mexicans and Americans went through the process, with the exception of of several groups. When Reagan used it, for, Reagan used it for his election piece. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that they went through the process, and they're 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 being identified as under, undocumented workers and all this other stuff alone. Same thing. Same right. thing with blacks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We lost a lot of jobs. Mexican Americans here lost jobs on that whole issue of, of uh, undocumented workers and whatever. Right. The same thing with Black Americans, but no one talks about it that way. You no, got me. Everybody sort of accepts it, so to speak. You know what I mean? And both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. We're still talking about the Clinton piece, uh, and the well, Clinton piece. Well, don't forget, we have said a street. Okay. Named, we have a street in the city named after Cesar Chavez, and he was absolutely he hated uh, illegal immigrants. He was a Mexican American. Well, yes, I know, but he fought illegal immigration yeah. because he knew that they depressed wages yes. for people that yes. were here legally. Or I met the guy. I met the guy when he had to pull an Observer newspaper. Right. You got me. But no one wants to talk about that. Even today, mm -hmm. we do. We talk about the whole piece, but then, but then, getting back to Clinton again, the same situation. Again, uh, you think about it. You, you say, "Well, gee whiz, Clinton uh, and both Clintons and Bill it was, was sort of a recognized as really promoting and supporting blacks, right?" But remember back in the '90s when the, when the whole idea of drugs, you know, just smoking weeds, and and a number of young blacks were supposedly selling drugs on the streets yes, or whatever. Cocaine. And the Clinton, Crack cocaine. the Clintons came in and picked them all up and put them in the pen. Right. Right. Yes. You got me. Yes. But no one talked. A Democrat, right? Okay. So now the day uh, President Obama, uh, he basically released a few, right? On the marijuana. Yeah. On the marijuana piece, and said that, hey, by the way, as part of that, piece, but he didn't. Not only did he release just blacks, he released whites too. Yes. Across the board, Pro probably more whites than black. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? So, and at the same time, he says, okay, fine. He didn't say provide them jobs. No. He didn't provide them jobs when he released them. No. You know what I mean? Because you had people out there that were unemployed that didn't, didn't commit a crime. So, I mean, that's another issue. But the fact of the matter is they should have been educated. You know what I mean? Have a, he hopefully have a, a high school diploma or something of that nature. But, but the bottom line is that they didn't have any jobs getting out on the streets. Right. And you know for a fact you can't survive in this country if you don't have a job. Otherwise, you just fit that criminal justice system. Is that fair? Well, uh, actually, people can get... I, I, had, I had a client years ago who uh, uh, he said to me that he, he, was, he, was, he chose to be homeless because homeless in Portland live very, very well. Um, and he didn't have a job. Um, I never tried, I've never lived homeless myself. I don't want to try, but I had a client who said that living was easy in Portland. Uh, well, it's all over now. Well, it's all over. We could have solved the problem in, 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 uh, in, in Portland, Oregon, had they elected this guy named, let's see, let's see Broussard, Oh, but that's right. He's a black guy. Oh my God, I didn't know who that guy was, but uh, but it, it was an issue. See, right? Mm -hmm. That fair. You supported me. Of course I did. But see, we didn't. But now we still have it. So, but, but I'm still on call, by the way. If you want to resolve that problem, it's no problem. Uh, Ted could probably uh, be my assistant. You know what I'm saying? In fact, he, Don Dupe is another good friend of mine. We we know that problem. We saw that problem overnight with the police department. See, we'll make we'd make the the union chief, the union uh, our our chief. And then Don would supervise him, see, and then solve that problem, see. And wouldn't have to worry about the police department. But that's another issue. But getting back to the to the Clinton, we got about another about another uh, ten minutes, maybe maybe about eight eight minutes or so. And I want to bring in a third party person. I'm talking about Gary Gary Anderson. You know what I mean of the Libertarian Party. Okay. Right. Let's talk to him about uh, what about 
that particular group, you know, because I, I think both of us kind of like took our shingles away to a certain degree from the Republican Party. I took, oh, I took I, mine away years, ago, well, years I, ago. I took mine. I, you know, I was there trying to see if I could help them reorganize themselves because there are a few of them that we need to really clean house. But I tried. I just couldn't. Uh, the Art Robinson was the one that um, uh, basically tried to help me out, help out by making me the engagement chair of the Republican Party and, and outreaching the vets. But I just couldn't. I just couldn't beat him out. So at the end of the day, Arts is still up there in Junction City, up in Oregon, up there, and he's asked me to go down and maybe live in Junction City, and I could be the outreach chairman there. But anyway, I, I decided to take my shingle and also the Lincoln shingle because the Republican Party don't respect the Lincoln shingle. That part of history that I'm concerned with, right? Identifying with blacks. But the but the point, point I'm making is that I went and selected the Libertarian Party. You know, freedom for everybody, right for everybody across the board. But then I, I, I'm saying, here we got Gary, and, I, and I'm trying to get Gary to come over here and maybe bend his ear a little bit about what he should be doing a bit on this whole issue of, of, uh, of, of blacks and whatever and re re identifying in this area. But, uh, but the thing is, is that I can't get in touch with the guy. The guy can't get, get down here enough. And, but, it's but even when I'm thinking about Gary, I like the guy to a certain degree because guess what? I like the best thing. I, and one of the reasons why I took my shingle there is that he was former governor of New Mexico. Right. Right next to Mexico. Right. If anybody had a solution to undocumented workers and drugs and whatever, he should be the guy. Well, so the, what happened? Well, the problem with him is that if you want to nail him down with one word, it's pothead. Pothead? Yes. I'm pothead? <laughs> yes. But I'm he's not. right next to Mexico. Are you saying to me the man's been, he's been blowing a joint for days? Well, I think he, he vowed to not take marijuana during the campaign. Oh, is that right? Yes. But oh, why did he say that? I mean, then, then he could have gotten, the, then we'd know exactly what his platform's all about. We, we can take him off of, off of that piece, see? Well, that's where, that's where his passion is. And, and the, the sad thing about him is he's been more pro-government than uh, your, your, your average libertarian. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he, he's displayed an a, a awful lack of knowledge about foreign affairs. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and what about uh, black folks, black America, and, and Mexican, Mexican America? What does he say about black folks? You, know, you hear anything about, what is positioned about blacks being uh, assimilated into our society so they, they just become Americans just like everybody else? What well, do you think? Do you I, think I don't, I, I assume that he's, he's colorblind uh, on, on that, uh, just as, as I am, just as you are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I'm not seeing any action. I've seen the, no assimilation. Well, let's help him out. Let's see if we can help him out. Well, the thing about New Mexico, though, is that there is a there's a huge Hispanic population in, Mex in New Mexico, and as far as I know, they're treated just the same way as white people are. So I think New Mexico, you know, is a is a is a well is more than better, but Mexican Americans, though, see Mexican right. Americans. So me, he should take that as part of the platform. Yes. And say, hey, we got we got Mexican Americans here, and he's got these undocumented workers. And this is what we need to do, right? Okay. And the same thing with black. We got, but, but the bottom line, the the, 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 in, the the person who's basically brought the issue to the table to resolve this issue, assimilation are black Americans. Well, the problem, though, is that nobody's heard what he has to say because he wasn't included in the debates because he didn't have the 15 percent of the popular uh, polling to uh, to get on the debate. So we don't know that is we, the, the, the people, have, of course you and I mean. might have paid attention, but the vast majority of Americans, all you heard from Hillary Clinton and, and Donald Trump. Okay. Okay, so, so we, we need to tell him that this is an issue. Fair? Well, I hope he's listening. Well, but I tell you who is listening. listening. Donald Trump is listening. Okay, well, he's, he's actually he's reached been out. talking about Donald just for a minute. Look, look, look. We're about 426. We have to come back here. Look like, well, gee, well, this is some heated stuff here. Look like we're going to have to come back and talk about Don. But let's just briefly talk about Don real quick. Don. Well, he has reached out to African Americans. Yes, he has. And, and, and ministers? far more than, than uh, Hillary Clinton has. Yes, that's right. Now, and, and he doesn't patronize and far them. more than the Republican parties have done. Yes, that's absolutely true. Big time. Got me? That's true. So he's reached out. Why is it he's not accepted? Well. I think he is. Well, I, 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 I hope. Think, I think he's got the little people. He may. He relates to the little people. But and that's, you got the media, right? And yes. we don't like the media. Remember, uh -huh. remember when we first got into this situation, it said, it said, it said, it said, it said that point blank, it said, look. The majority of the population do not like the Congress. No politicians, right? Right. The majority, the majority of the population don't like the media, especially the, the major media right. in New York. Right? You got me? Yes. And But guess who was running the race in the primary? The politicians yeah. and the media. Sure. Uh, politicians. Po politicians and the media. Now, in the general election, because now you just can't get those electoral votes just by buying them. 
politically. Mm -hmm. Now you got to get the population, if you will, to, to basically give you those by getting the numbers. Right. So now politicians are involved, and then he's an outsider. And yes. the politician is saying, hey, you, we're going to say anything we have to do, anything we need to do to get this vote. That's what the politician is doing. Right. What he's doing, he's going out, he's reaching out, he's meeting people, he's talking to people. I don't give a darn if you, he's down in the bottom because he still recognizes the whole issue with the, with the, with the former revolution we had with, between the North and the South. Yes. He recognizes that folks down deep South that have some issues still with the idea of race. Absolutely. Because they, re they reinforced it. Politicians, they reinforced the idea of keeping this separation of powers. Yes. Fair? Yes. Donald, on the other hand, he reached out. And he said, hey, look, we got those folks involved. And those other so-called blacks and in and, and other areas were basically who, who'd been over here representing, be, being represented by the Democrats, got me? They, they were still supporting the Democrats as opposed to, hey, this guy's giving us a way out. Well, I think we're, we're, Donald's most significant reaching out was to Detroit, a, a completely failed city that has been run by Democrats for a long, long time. And they, they've destroyed industry in that city and, and, and they've destroyed the city. It, it's a it's a shell. It's just it's just it, and it used to be one of the most vibrant, healthy cities in this country. I know that. I know that. I know destroyed that. I know. by the Democrat Party. Oh, for sure. Well, look, we need to come back. I mean, we got some more stuff to talk. And by the way, viewers, by the way, as you can see, we really got heavily involved in this deal. But we did touch a little bit about Hillary for now, right? And then we did a little bit about Trump. We did a little bit about the third party. There's a Green Party, whatever. But, but realistically, uh, Gary is kind of like the leading proponent that's being identified. Right. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll do another show maybe next week. Can you hang with that? Sure. Okay, folks, you get that word? Okay, now, what you need to do is get around the table, get your discussion going, and do the same thing we were doing, okay? And then when we get back next week with you, We'll make an announcement and then, then we'll talk some more. All right? But make sure you vote. Vote. You got your vote. Pull it out. Don't throw it in the can. Pull it out. Take care. Have a good one. By the way, you can't register anymore. We're going we're gonna to take a short break now and have a good one. Have a good one. Take care. That's all Americans that we're talking about now. Remember, we got a chance for assimilation. We can all be everybody. But remember, you got to watch out. You got those politicians. But remember the outsiders. We're the outsiders. Point blank. And Donald is too. Take care. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Oh, yes, this is what I got to do right now. Hey, look like we're back on. We're back on. We're back on. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. Folks, we're excited. Again, the excitement is the fact this is voting time. Voting time. You got your ballots. Make sure you've got your ballots. You got to get out there and vote. Don't throw those in the cans, and don't let someone else vote for you. Read it. Read it. And then try to get the information on the background. You got your voters pamphlet you can you can read, and then you can look at our show, the Voters Digest, because we're going to just get right into the races across the board. This particular this particular segment of the Oregon Voters Digest, we're going to talk about local, local right here in Oregon. What's happening in Oregon? What's happening in the largest city in the state of Oregon, in Multnomah County, Portland? And boy, do I have some guests tonight. 
we got one major guest tonight, and then the other one has been on before many times over, which you will see before. But before I announce the, this other part of our dear talk, Teresa <laughs> Dupay. Teresa Griffin Kennedy, Teresa Kennedy Dupay. That's long for me. You know, being a senior <laughs> like me, one. I can't remember that long. <laughs> tea. <laughs> That's a good one. But we got Donya. We got a we got we got a historic moment here. Yes. We, we've got we got a vet, as you know. You've seen Don before. Uh, he was in the Navy. You know, he was in the Department of the Marine Corps. Yeah, right, right, Don. <laughs> you, you're laughing. That uh, first time you first time Everybody's you say, laughing. first time you never said anything about that. Yeah, you always jump on my ass. When I, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but anyway, Don Toupay, Don Toupay, trust me, a good friend of mine. Whatever. He's going to be walking down the aisle at Portland State. He's going to have a degree. Trust me. We're yeah. both Millennium Seniors. And I'll tell you about that one of these days. Millennium Seniors. Uh, we're both in the same age bracket. Uh, 78 here and 80 there. I mean, here he is. At 80 years old, he's going to be walking down the aisle with his Greek. Congratulations, Don. Well, thank you. Bruce, you know I did it for myself. Fantastic. With a lot of help from my wife. Fantastic. But I also hope to be an inspiration for others. Yes. Because I have grandchildren and children. And I want them to, to see the value of education. Yes, yes, yes. Because I thought I was a pretty smart guy. Yes. Until I went back to college. Yes. And then I found out how much I don't know. Oh, wow, wow. But I've learned it all now, <laughs> and I have my degree. Yes. So, no, no, so I, I'm inspired. We should be. You become my professor now. Yeah, okay. Because i got to walk yeah. down the aisle, yeah. maybe another. Can I walk down it with you at the same no, time? No. Why can't I? <laughs> You can sign off and just you say, have Bruce. to have uh, the degree requirements. No, if you sign off at your age, I'll, they'll have to respect that. Uh -huh. That's fair? Yeah. You wouldn't say no to me, would you? Sure. You wouldn't do that black and white thing on no, me, would you? No. All right, I'm not me. You know that. Cause you you hide on. under my robe. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, is, this is getting greater, better, and better. Well, hey, congratulations, Don. Anyway. I mean, well deserved. I did it for myself, I and I did it that. for others. And I know I know this lovely lady yes. kept you out on that piece, <laughs> right? Sure did. You got me? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful lady. Thanks very much, T. Thank you, too. Thank you. Okay, it was great. Yeah. You got other work to do for him, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're still going to be reaching out for vets and whatever in the state of Oregon, and that's mm -hmm. what Don and I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going to be very heavily involved in the whole issue of, of crime and, and yeah. law enforcement because that's a big area there that we need to come up with some solutions to yeah. kind of resolve some of these. Okay, so what we're going to do now is that we want you to stick around just for a moment because we're going to have a, we got an important ballot measure that's on the ballot, ballot measure number 96. And that's uh, it's basically uh, dedicating 1.5% of undedicated lottery dollars for veteran programs and services. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. About time. Isn't that something? And then we've got the young one of the young ladies that basically the leading that whole that, that whole situation, and that's uh, Julie Julie Parrish, and she's a state representative, Republican, and she's co-chief sponsor and and chief petitioner for keeping our promise. The Oregon Veterans Lottery Bill. I think we've got on the line. We maybe get a couple comments from her. Is Julie there? You got Julie there? Getting close? Okay. Julie, are you there? I'm here. Hi, how are you? How's it going, Julie? How's the campaign going? How's your campaign going? Well, it's going well. You know, just 16 days left, and I think like uh, just about every other voter in Oregon, we'll all be glad when it's over. You know, what's so interesting about Julie, by the way, I might mention about Julie, is that, you know, besides just running her own campaign, she's doing all these other things, mm -hmm. getting involved, if you will, and, and really taking, uh, taking care of Oregonians across the board and issues for Oregon. And for her to spend the time now, besides running her own campaign, on vet issues, which is a major, major issue aspect of it. This is awesome. This will probably be a first for Oregon. What do you think? Say, tell us about that, Julie. Well, you know, it's been uh, four years that I've been trying to get what is now Measure 96 to the ballot. Okay. And what Measure 96 does is it allocates a percentage of the undedicated portion of lottery dollars, and it's really important to folks understand undedicated. It doesn't what happen does to anybody else's uh, voter-approved uh, portion of the okay. lottery, but it takes a little slice of lottery, and it sets it aside permanently for veterans' programs and services. And what most folks don't know, because Oregon's not a base state, you know, we don't have like Fort Lewis or a, um, you know, a, some big military base here. Um, we have 350,000 veterans in Oregon. That's right. But only about 100,000 of them have ever connected with the VA. So we have a lot That's of right. work to do to make sure yes. that we get veterans properly aligned with the benefits that they've earned. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, if they're in state programs, we properly align them over to the VA, which saves our state uh, general fund some dollars as right. well. How much money do you anticipate this bringing in? 
Well, um, the best guesstimate from the uh, revenue office in the next biennium, in the 17-19 biennium, uh, is about $19 million above and beyond what the legislature is currently allocating out of general funds. So okay. it's real dollars to be able to hire veteran service officers, help people come in. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've got a little bit of a tickle in my throat. Help people be able to come in and connect to those benefits, but also fill some gaps services yes. and programs. You know, right. we have about 8,000 veterans on the streets at night in Oregon. Uh, we've got folks who, you know, because the VA has long wait times, they, they're, they're struggling on health care, and, and we need to get them connected to some emergency health care. Uh, and for these young guys coming home, uh, we, Oregon's one of the most um, deployment-ready states in the nation, right? So our guys are constantly uh, being cycled in and out of foreign deployments. And so for these guys coming home, they're dealing with some PTSD. Some of them are dealing yes. with, uh, you know, issues where, uh, you know, some marital issues with the family. They could use counseling. Uh, and, you know, and because the, our National Guard is a part-time, some of these guys just need help landing a job, getting Good. back into the civilian work life. So um, this benefits... Uh, all veterans across, you know, we, have, we have veterans from World War II all the way to the current uh, post-9-11 conflicts. So every veteran at every age and stage, this money will help. It's, it's a big deal. And it came out of the legislature unanimously. Well, I'll tell you what, tell you what Julie, we're very excited about it because Don and I have been outreaching right here on the Oregon Voters Digest uh, ever since I've known Don, you know, besides talking these other issues aspect of it. But also, I uh, chatted with you just for a moment. I was looking at, uh, at, because this is a statewide issue aspect of it, I was looking for those, uh, you know, those folks who are running for office, for statewide office, as to whether or not they were veterans or not. And I noticed there were three of them running around. But one in particular was Dennis Richardson. And Dennis, Dennis was a hero back in Vietnam. So we mm -hmm. served during, the, during that same time. And you said to me that at, at some point in time, he participated in this measure, right? Yeah, so in, I tried to bring it the very first time in 2013, and it failed, and then we brought it back again. And um, so Dennis was still serving with me in the legislature in 2013, and he wow. was a sponsor wow. of this measure. You know, wow. he's a veteran. Uh, he was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Exactly. Uh, served our country honorably, and, uh, you know, and he himself has suffered, you know, just like a lot of veterans, yep. have suffered from some lifelong health effects due to some of the chemical exposures he experienced exactly. in Vietnam. and. Uh, you know, he's got some uh, some diabetes as a result of that. And so, you know, so he's very sensitive to the fact that uh, there's a lot of veterans out there in worse shape than, than he is uh, that really need our help. And so he was coach, uh, you know, the, uh, he was uh, the, the vice co-chair of Ways and Means at the time. And, and I, it was my bill. And I said, hey, look, uh, would you, you know, you're a veteran. I want every veteran who's in uh, the building to sign on on to this bill. And, and he did. So okay. uh, and he was supportive. So. Okay. Well, Julie, thank you very much. We, we appreciate that. And we definitely, we, we're, we're asking all veterans, in fact, all Oregonians to support this particular measure. Very, very important measure. Again, thanks very much, Julie. And thanks for the work and the hard work you are doing. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on today. Sure enough. Thanks again. Okay. I Take just care. want bye people bye. to understand that using myself as an example, I'm a Cold War veteran. Right. That was a long time ago. But I still have PTSD from it. Right, right. That's right. You know, and it's still been unrecognized. I still have nightmares about the crap that I went through in Germany in 1959, uh, 58, 57. So those issues still exist for some of us older people and are not being addressed. Well, you know, and it's kind of interesting because, and in fact, that's how I met Don. Yeah. Because I reached out to Don, mm -hmm. and because that's what I've been doing. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I, I ran him down here as an outreach yeah. and shared it with them, them. And all of a sudden he found out that, in fact, they, he, he did have those issues through the VA. They qualified him that yes. way. And, and so my point is that it really means a lot. There's a lot of vets out there that, uh, that don't know, just like Julie was making the point about these monies. But the other thing about this situation here, we want to make sure that the monies go to the vets. Absolutely. Providing the service. And I'm, we're not talking about this rinky-dink whatever situation where these guys, are, you get these organizations out there and they're saying that they're reaching out to vets. But wait a minute. We need to vet those. Yeah. Because you've got the Veteran Administration. They have ser those services. We don't need to duplicate those. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We need to make sure that the money is making, making sure they're going to vets. Maybe even bring in their kids. They got a lot of good stuff and whatever. So anyway, Don, thank you very much. You want to stick around for a minute till we? I'll I, be I've right got here. this reporter here that I want to. <laughs> I want to introduce because because this is so important now, folks. That, that uh, the Voters Digest, Oregon Voters Digest, we're gonna get into the news business too. Because in all due respect, uh, we've been trying to get to the news to come here. Since we can't come on, we're gonna be part of that team. 
we're going to be part of the news group. So yeah. once a month, you're going to see this lady right here. She's going to be our news director for the Oregon Voters Digest. And she's going to be doing some investigative work aspect of it and talking about issues that are relevant to us locally here in Multnomah County. It's the largest county in the state of Oregon. And in all due respect, if politicians who are running statewide, if they don't recognize Multnomah County, they will not get elected to office. And it's very important. And I'm talking to both Democrats and Republicans because they have the same. They get they get the, the lion's share of, of the piece. But in all due respect, the issues, the issues that we're faced with right now, like homelessness and all kinds yeah. of things, senior citizen issues, this, that, and the other, they still exist, and the Democrats are in charge. Well, what I'd like to say is that whoever's sitting in that chair needs to be responsible for this area. And guess who's going to be holding them up big time? Here she is right here. And trust me, she's good at it. She knows what she's doing. Welcome aboard, buddy. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. So why don't we just get right into what's on your mind today? You got anything to share with the uh, viewers? Public? I have a commentary coming out probably on Monday or Tuesday at Go mm -hmm. Local PDX, which is um, a news source that I write for periodically. Um, and it's kind of a commentary about Portland politics, and it will be kind of act, it will kind of act as the introduction to an interview that I did with Amanda Fritz, which will be um, city city council person right now city commissioner Port, Port, Amanda Port Fritz, commissioner okay yeah. oh so you had an interview with her I met with her October eighteenth, and uh, she gave me thirty minutes, and we ended up talking for about forty five minutes really. And I did an interview, and I'm I'm still transcribing it, and that will be published with Go Local probably in the next two weeks, week and a half, mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. like that. Let me throw something out on the table, and Don, you can just you want to jump right on it. But you know, there are some issues that that just sort of like floats around, you know, when we were mm -hmm. like, for instance, like Black Lives Matter, you know, mm -hmm. with Teresa Refford, and I know she's worked very hard to keep that thing going, and yeah. and then, but the bottom line is, it is an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, here within our city, obviously, and all, all major cities like this have that part of that's that issue. We got the homeless issue aspect yeah. of it. Lord that's that's a that's a major, major, major issue. Because Don and I, we we experienced that when I was walking the streets when we were running mm -hmm. running for mayor, we couldn't get anyone in the city, especially those politicians, uh, that, that tell us where were the vets. Yeah, they wouldn't tell us anywhere where the vets were, and that's really so. If we can work on some of those areas, then we got the baby boomers. We got a lot of seniors, and all due respect, I've talked with when I was running for office. Eating cat food, yeah, can't afford their rents. Yeah. Then the whole issue of uh, of this whole issue of, of, of gentrification. Yeah. Of black folks. Right. The, the, the northeast Portland corridor was identified as the black area. Yeah. But all of a sudden they're all gone. They're being yeah. pushed in the Gresham area. Yeah. See, they are. We need to talk they about are. that. Bring that to the issues yeah. and bring these politicians to the table because, in all due respect. That's the problem. We need yeah. leadership. We need people yeah. elected to office that's going to respond. And, to and we some need of the Ted Wheeler and this, the new, the, you know, the, the city council um, and the new mayor Ted Wheeler to address the housing crisis because we have native Portlanders who've lived here their whole lives, including black folks in yes, Northeast yes, Portland, yes. in the Albina district, being pushed out, mm -hmm. having to go farther east into Gresham because they can't afford the rent hikes, mm -hmm. even in Northeast Portland. Portland is absolutely becoming impossible to live in because of the rent increases, mm -hmm. and it's wrong. It's mm -hmm. really wrong, and I think that there should. Um, I, I, I'm just very concerned about it, and it's it's distressing to see so many native families, mm -hmm. native uh, Portlanders, black. Uh, yes. Native American, yes. uh, white, being pushed farther east. Mexican Americans, right? Mexican Americans. Go on, Don. Let, let me point this out: uh, the community at large is not doing enough to, to for this homeless problem. Yeah. Example: uh, the gas company line breaks, the building blows up. Right. What happens? So that the Red Cross is out there with sandwiches and coffee, right, and right, feeding people. Right. But every night we got three or four thousand people sleeping on the street. That's right. Where is the Red Cross? That's right. That's we right. have a disaster. Yeah. If if we had a hurricane or a, or, that's a, right. or an earthquake that's right. that displaced four thousand people, right. there'd be Red Cross wagons right. on that's every right. other corner. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's where right. are they now? It's, it's, you, well, it's you know a, where they are. You know where the Red Cross is. They're they, no, no, they they're sitting down there at the gate <laughs> at Wapato, <laughs> they wanting to get in. See, because the homeless are ready to get in and use some of those beds. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then here we got the county sitting up here getting ready to give the give the place away for mm -hmm. nine million dollars. Right. It would cost you a hundred million dollars to build again. Right. You know? And yeah. and we got mental illness folks, and that's right. part of that job. Right. That's part of that job is to do something about these folks and house them. And guess what? Yeah. They have no place. So yeah. all of a sudden, the citizens are going to get be getting a bill lately saying, oh, we, we got to build a building for the 
for the uh, the homeless and right. Christian. Wait a it's minute. It's already there. It's already there. <laughs> Sydney Wapato. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta give credit to Loretta Smith. Yes. Yeah. Because Loretta Smith has been keeping the yes. deal. But then all of a sudden, uh un unfortunately the chairperson, uh Kifori is basically just being hard nosed about it. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, as as you read the Tribune, the mm -hmm. guy is even not even qualified. Yeah. He didn't even have a down payment and he's being yeah. considered. Mm -hmm. yeah. You would I would think I've been in the building business. When I got into that business, I had to put my money down just to even talk to the banker yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. to get something going. This guy, he, he, he's talking about little ideas, this, this, that, and this. It's ridiculous. So my point is that hopefully I'm, I'm sharing it with you because it's frustration. Don and I are frustrated. Yeah. We got work to do yeah. in some other and, areas. And I mentioned Loretta, uh, Loretta Smith's uh, editorial that oh, you she did? wrote. I did. There's going to be a link to it in my commentary. Oh, good. And good. I, you know, I, I applaud her for, for okay. speaking out yes. about it and for for fighting for Wapato because it's the it's the the logical conclusion. Yes, yes. You know. Would you consider maybe giving her a call and seeing interviewing her I, I about could, Wapato? I could try. So you want to try? Yeah, I could okay, try. well just tell her. Tell her <laughs> tell her that Dawn and Bruce sent you. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise we're gonna talk about this issue. Okay. It's a major, major issue yeah. aspect of it. And you know, then Wheeler's coming here. In fact in all due respect, that's another thing. I think you need to interview Wheeler. Because he's just set on the side where all the issues that are coming on down the way. Like my my instinct said, is that that's he... That's insulting. <laughs> my instinct is he wouldn't agree. <laughs> he what? He probably wouldn't, he probably wouldn't give me no, a no, half an hour no, of time. But, but when you call him, <laughs> remind him that this is a government of the people, by the people, people and for, for the, the people. people. Right. He was elected to mayor by the people. Right. And that means the people are the employers. Mm -hmm. He's the employee. A lot of them don't understand that. Yeah. You know, they just don't want to call you. They don't yeah. want to return your call if you're Republican mm -hmm. or are you here or you mm -hmm. are you Teresa or you're Don. Well, guess what? That's why we want to do this media piece mm -hmm. on the Oregon Voters Digest. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to leave any turn, any any stones unturned. Mm -hmm. and we may even get on, get involved, hit some of those media folks. Because remember the whole issue with OPB because they're mm -hmm. in the business. Mm -hmm. We went down there with OPB. What, Talk to me, Don. What's up? What is What I see now is... Uh, Mayor elect Ted Wheeler yes. and Commissioner Novick yes. traveling to Texas. Yes. And they're looking over some homeless campus yes. that, that has, has some merit yes. and some yeah. good successes. And they're not paying attention to Wapato. Yeah. Yeah. You, you to don't need here. to go to yeah. Texas right. to find out the problem. I, I solved the solution when I ran for sheriff in 2006. That's right. Let's open the doors. I interviewed Wapato. you right here. I interviewed yeah. you right here. Let's go, yeah. let's go to open the doors. Let's Jeez. get these people in there. The fact that there's uh, this many people sleeping on the street is yep. horrible. It's, 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 it's insulting. It's yeah. insulting. It's embarrassing well, to me as a citizen. Well, the other thing about Ted Willie, at one point in time, he was the chair he was. of Multnomah County. Yes, he, yes, he was. He yes, knows he, the issues, but he's sitting down there, supposedly in the yeah. treasurer's sitting there, mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. In fact, the first time I saw him, he made a little, he, 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 he addressed a group of folks. I went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went. I went there, and I, I listened to what he had to say. He didn't, he said, with my focus is with the millenniums yeah. and the middle class. He said mm -hmm. nothing about seniors. Mm -hmm. He said nothing about the little people aspect of it. Right. He never addressed the issue of crime aspect right. of it. You've noticed the police didn't even endorse him. Right. Didn't, didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't endorse him when he ran, right? You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and that's the thing about Ted Wheeler. Um, I don't think he really cares that much about the little people. And the divide between the haves and the have-nots in Portland gets wider every yeah. day. Well, what is his goal? I mean, this is just me, my opinion. His goal is to maybe get uh, pick up uh, Ron Wyden's seat, maybe run for that seat, uh, preparing himself for that. Or my dear friend Earl De Pearl, Monroe. I mean, oh, Earl, <laughs> Earl, Earl Blumenau, right? Blumenau. Blumenau, he has done nothing. This is his district. Mm -hmm. He says nothing to him, and he won't answer his phone. If you're not a Democrat, well, I may yeah. put my shingle over there. <laughs> Maybe I'll take my shingle. I'm in, I'm a Libertarian Party right now, but I got I got a lot of I got a lot of thing in, in the Libertarian Party because if Gary comes through and he comes down to Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. because we can help him out, you know a bit, you know what I'm saying? And get, but my point is that uh, we got we need leadership. Yeah, just yeah. straight up with you. We need leadership that's yeah. got the guts to do something. That's right. Got yeah. the guts to take on the police uh, structure. That's right. That's and right. do something about it exactly. and get changed. Exactly. I went to a meeting last night at Portland State about race problems. Yes. Yeah. And they keep saying the same thing. The police never change. Yeah. They never change. No matter what happens, they never change. We went to a, the, <laughs> the reason they never change is because they don't understand how to solve the problem. We went to. But you a, got a but you got a black American as the as the union chief. Yeah. And, and, and he and don't the, understand. And, and he, he don't not, understand. He's not helping. But see, the perception the perception is if the police department runs the city, that's a bunch of crap. 
No, I don't we think elect so. a mayor for the city of Portland. He's got to be responsible. And if no. he can't do it, then back off. Get the hell out of there. Well, and Don and I'll do it. We've already said it, but they wouldn't look, elect us. Look what happened to, to our president. He's a hell of a guy, too, mayor. buddy. He's a hell of a guy. Our present mayor has a police department command staff that's in shambles. Oh, he can't do it. He can't do it. Yeah, it really is. in shambles. Is. Look, we'll say it again, Don. We did it before. We'll, tell, we'll take Daryl Turner, who's president yeah. of the Portland Police Association, right? Mm -hmm. for, for Portland. We're now, we're going to actually get him to be our chief of police. Okay. Whoever the union president is will always be the chief of police for us. And then you'll supervise that piece. <laughs> Fair? Yeah. I think that, would that work? You're a former policeman. We talked about that. Where's your book anyway, by the way? They, oh, should, be buying, the they should be buying that book. If you, give me a copy of that book. Well, y'all got about, I got about three. You might got that, T, it's over there. In the, no, right over there, T. We're, we're on, this is community television. And so <laughs> Teresa is so nice. She's so nice. Thank you very much, Teresa. Yesterday That's we so went nice. to a, Behind we went the to oh, a, this is the, this is the second edition. It is. Yeah. Right, when did you get this? Oh, two months oh, ago. I haven't we, got that yeah. one. I mean, I haven't get one of them old editions. We anyway, got you folks, one. We got you one. Oh, okay. But here it is, folks. <laughs> Behind the badge in River City. And trust me, this is an excellent piece. We're not selling anything. The bottom line, this is just history. It's history. Don it was a former Portland policeman in Northeast Portland. That was his precinct. Yep. He ran that piece. And this talks to that. And you'll see familiar names and faces. Mm -hmm. And it's just an excited piece. And it's not being anti police. It's just yeah. showing you this is part of our history. You can't go right. anywhere without knowing wh where you've been. We, and that's what it's all about. Yesterday we were at a showing of the documentary Arresting Power, and Teresa yeah. Rayford was there with um, the board of Don't Shoot Portland. Mm -hmm. And she has an all-female board. Awesome. And we got to listen to them talk for about an hour, and um, we raised our hand, and Don talked about the 14th Amendment, and I introduced his book, and we gave Teresa a, a copy of the book, um, a signed copy to read. And, uh, and I also want to say that um, there's a, a community member um, activist who shall remain nameless, who I found out described the book as an apology by an apologist, and that all cops stick together. And I have to say, I have to clarify. Would you mind interviewing the person and, and uh, put him on the deal? Or bring him here so we, <laughs> Don and I can interview him. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not an apology by an apologist. It is, it is really a period piece, but it's also an indictment of old world police corruption. So in that sense, it's an indictment of the Portland Police Bureau of the 1960s and the 1970s. It is not an apology by an apologist. I just want to state that very clearly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This person who said that is completely misinformed, and I don't believe this person read the book, right. although this person claimed well, to have read well, the book. Well, that's why we want to educate. But, that's why we're doing this media yeah. piece. We're going to educate. We got Don, who's got good background. Mm -hmm. I'm former military, marine type aspect of it. It is a paramilitary kind of a situation, mm -hmm. and we need to know what's going on. When I was in the Marine Corps, I wasn't, quote, the gunny running the whole, the, the military running the whole country. No. I was a, I, I was a military person. I did what I was told, yeah. as you will. And the commanding chief was the president. And the mm -hmm. same thing here. The mayor is uh, is the leadership person. These guys are law enforcement officers. Yeah. People, we need to understand. We'll spend more time in that. I would like very much for you to spend a little time interviewing Don again, and <laughs> and really really getting it home to educate the people about the fact they're not just policemen. Right. They are law enforcement officers. And they're somewhat, we the people yeah. put the policy together. Mm -hmm. the, the the mayor supervised putting that policy together. Then once he puts that policy together, he gives them a training package with yeah. the policy and then they enforce the law. It's yeah. a very simple process. Yeah. And, and, and when Don was a police officer and a detective, well, mainly when he was working the streets, so much more than just a law enforcement right, officer. Right, right, right. They were social workers, oh, too, yeah. oh, giving yeah. out food boxes and doing look, a lot look of like work. A, look like we're at that point now, okay. folks. Gee whiz, I can go on and on and on. I mean, it's right off the bat. But, hey, thanks very much yes. for being here. You'll be Thank seeing you. her once a month. Okay, <laughs> once a month you'll be seeing her. Okay, thanks, folks. I'll see you next week. But I'll be doing another show next week, I think, next Monday or something. And we'll be on the show again, right. talking about it again. Hey, take care. Have a good one. We enjoy you. But again, vote. Go out and vote. Make sure you got your ballots. Don't throw them away. And don't give them to people to sign up and ask these folks, who should I vote for? Spend the time to understand what is going on and read the material. You got the voters pamphlet and you got the Oregon Voters Digest. Give us a call. We'll tell you what to do. Take care. <laughs> Have a good one.